name is Jerry Hudson, and I want to welcome you to my show, the High Park Literary Reviewer Show, HP Spotlight. Thank you for joining us, and today we have a friend of mine who I've known for a couple years and now, and she brings forward an awesome product. Uh, Ashada, why don't you tell me what, uh, a little bit, first tell me a little bit about yourself. Why don't you do that? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, first of all, thank you for having me on. Always a pleasure to take myself into the world of others through oh, television. Wow. So oh, wow. thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thank if you. A little bit about myself. I don't know if that's a possibility. Okay, well, there's tell a us. lot of bit about myself, but I'll put it in a capsule. Okay, put it in a capsule. I'm a house What's head. Your elevator girl. speech. Oh, I said I'm a house head. I like to say that first. Okay. No, but um, now I'm the founder of the Soulful Chicago Book Fair. Yes. And I am the author of Beating Black Kids, which is a book 10 years old this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's a book about not beating children to discipline them because our race seems to think that's a normal thing, but okay. that's a psychosis we have to work through. And I have a new book that came out last Sunday. I'm excited about which that. Which is called Bitcoin for Black People. Mm. And so I'm just helping our people learn about cryptocurrency and how to use the new money to build whatever they want to build. No more permission from anyone. And I'm the mom of a girl who is 16, but she has a book also called Urban Girl Adventures. Mm -hmm. And she's a professional photographer okay. at 16. Yes. Her name okay. is Patience. So, oh, wow. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff. And I'm newly the um, operations manager for the Green Living Room, which is a new black owned business lounge on 64th and Cottage Grove. That's like my headquarters for everything now. And this is a beautiful place where the community can come and relax and do shows, watch movies have board meetings and we need that type of thing in our community so we don't have to go to the north side for that level of elegance. So yeah. Well it is really nice to have you here and learn mm -hmm. about that because you know I did not know about the new facility on okay. 64th and Cottage. Okay. And you have so much going on and I want to be clear and give you a chance to really talk about everything. So why why don't we kind of, you know, uh, talk about I want to talk about Think Bitcoin first, you know, because as we, you know, um, thinking about the new year, I've sure. been thinking about what it is, what does it mean to have 2020 vision mm -hmm. in the new year? What does that mean? Yeah, I'm big on that. I used to have a whole fundraising campaign called 2020 Vision, and they would go, I would ask people, do you have 2020 Vision? And they go, okay. what you mean? I said, you got $20. You got a vision? Give $20. <laughs> like, this is real basic, <laughs> right. you know, 2020 right. Vision. So um, it's really about going past the new year right and really into the future because I, we as a people we don't really look into the future okay we just don't I can't even think of a black movie that talks about the future mm. um, wow. other than maybe Black Panther but we didn't even make that mm. so looking into the future we're always either present or past mm. not much in the future and so Bitcoin is allowing our people to prepare for the future it may not you can spend it now but it's definitely the money of our offspring it will be normal to them. Just like direct deposit wasn't a thing at one point and neither were ATMs. I know when mm -hmm. I went to college, I didn't have a computer. You know, there were just things that weren't, a, I didn't have a cell phone, mm -hmm. but now these things are just commonplace. The internet is commonplace, right? And so Bitcoin is a, is a form of currency that exists now, wealthy. Oprah made 500 million in Bitcoin this year. Is that right? And so what are we doing? <laughs> Not having oh, it? Oh, wow. So, so Bitcoin, I wrote a book, Bitcoin for Black People, because I'm unapologetically for my people. Unapologetically. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, got Bitcoin for Black People. The other book is Beating Black Kids. Right. And people say, well, why just black? I'll be like, because I'm black. Like, okay, right. What are we doing? Well, like, and you're not really doing. excluding anybody. You're just saying that that's your specialty. Check this out. We are the only people on this globe that came to America not by on our own volition. That's right. We were forced to come here. Everybody else came for a better life. Mm. And so when you talk about being disenfranchised and, and hoodwinked and no, nah, I have every right to be unapologetically black. Everything is for our upliftment. Okay. Everything is for us to go forward. If you have a problem, go have a cup of tea somewhere and get over it. That's right. Because not that apologizing. somebody has to stick up for us. Absolutely without any conditions and, and trust I, me and i also feel like it in terms of our financial position in this country mm -hmm. there has got to be a way uh that we deal with that and you said like you said that as an author as we both are authors and mm -hmm. and and specializing in books you know octavia butler was one of the few people that talks about sci-fi and as you say we need to look at where it is that we want to be sure and how it is that we need to get there yes. what is it that we need to do and how do we need to get outside of what we already know? Absolutely. Learn something new and get in line step with that. Yeah, and do who we are. That's right. Like if you look at the world 
and the trends that are set and the people that the world love. It's always us. Absolutely. I don't care if it's tennis. <laughs> That's right. I don't care if it's whatever sure. you want. You can look at almost any industry and we tr are trailblazers That's in right. it. But usually we're working for other people's purposes and not our own. And so now let's just do it for ourselves. How about not that? Not sometimes. We've been exclusively working to other people's you know, and, and that just has to deal with self-worth. You exactly. know, thinking that that's how it has to be done. And it doesn't. But it doesn't anymore. You know, no. we have to raise our children in a certain way. I remember my daughter saying to me, I've only known a black president when okay. she was younger. And wow. that was a reality at one point. Like, exactly. man, she's only known a black president. So her generation has the, the propensity to do different because yeah. they know different. What? I know a black president. Well, know, the so. good thing about her knowing a black president is, and this president at the same time is that she realizes that anything is possible as a president. So you can go really high and then you can go really low. And so she knows that how bad it can really be and how good it can be. Yeah, well, I don't even think she sees it as bad okay, because well. she sees it as irrelevant. Okay. Trump okay. is a man. He's not God. Oh, well, you I'm know, not so denying we that, but he's right, pretty but I'm saying, bad. Every, but it's a whole bunch of bad people. But if oh, you're yeah. good enough, you will supersede anything oh, that absolutely. comes through your path. So yeah. the way she's raised is really about, I don't do no. I only do what do you want. And then we look at what we want, not what we don't want. And so that she's raised by an entrepreneurial black woman. Okay. So that's her, that's her path. That's phenomenal. So now mm -hmm. we're going to go to break. Okay. Let's go to break. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, wow. Oh, welcome back to uh, High Park Literary Reviewers Show HP Spotlight. And we are again with Ashada. Asada. Asada. You want to put that H in there? I do, ahead, don't I? Okay. You uh, go ahead. And do oh, it but but yeah, I wanted to get it right, though. <laughs> See? Uh, That's fine. Uh, so we were talking about uh, the financial positions. And so now we're going to talk about the other thing that people need to do in order to change their position in life, mm -hmm. and that is to learn new things, and that's by being exposed to new authors and getting new information. And why don't you tell us about your book fair? Sure. See, it's all kind of the same agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about the upliftment of our people, mm -hmm. it has to be more than just me making you smile. Absolutely. Right? And so the Soulful Chicago Book Fair was created because as an author, I know there's not a lot of venues that value what I have to say about me, mm. my people, and that's fine. It is okay. no way I'm, in, I'm gonna expect you, to. who's not my people, to now put me on stage. So I said, I'm gonna create our own stage okay. and make sure that black authors have a place that can increase the literary marketplace. Because what are we doing? Putting our books in the house and then collecting dust? Absolutely. No, here's a venue now mm -hmm. where black authors can come. We can hear our stories about ourselves, you know, according to us, for us. And that's not has nothing to do with what you're saying, but it has to do with you've told our story long enough. Well, the, that's right. You that's know. right. And so, so we, we can tell our own story. And that's what the Soulful Chicago Book Fair is here to do. Right. It's sort of a part of the venue where you start to change the dominant narrative. Yeah. As long as the dominant people control the dominant narrative, it doesn't change. It's only dominant to them. I that's don't care right. about their stories. Okay. For us, it, this right. is our world. <laughs> you know. And so when people ask me questions about can we do this or can we do that, this is ours. We could do anything we want to do. Absolutely. And so I'm really working to create that mindset set with black people, even with Bitcoin for black people. You can create an amount of wealth that's beyond your imagination to create what you want because no one gives you permission anymore. And so the Soulful Chicago Book Fair is beautiful. It's four city blocks long. Exactly. And it you is in do. the heart of the hood. Okay. It oh. ain't downtown. It's that's right. Hood, and, and, and it's fabulously attended. You get how many thousands of people I mean, people yeah, come we've, out? I mean, our biggest probably was 4,500 people oh, wow. to 61st Street, which the city told me straight up, why do you want to have a book fair there. There's, that's like the highest gang population. I said, yeah, they blow their noses too and they go to the bathroom. I don't care about them. And they Those read. are my babies. That's right. And we do read past High Park. We read past you know, on the South Side. So my thing is now, I mean, you would never, people say, oh, people don't read anymore. Tell that to the thousands of black people who come where they can find a book that's about them. See, that's the issue. It's not that we don't read. We just don't want to read what you wrote. But we're willing Absolutely. to read what we wrote about Absolutely. ourselves, Absolutely. and that changes the game because yeah, so. you're surrounded by us now, by children's books, nonfiction books. Just, it's a beautiful world, and it, it just fills you up because you just didn't know that we were all out there doing that. Oh, certainly. We, we basically do both. We do actually very well. I'm involved with writing groups mm -hmm. all the way down in Goodman, and you find that the best writing actually comes from people who look like we do. Uh, what it is is that we don't have the power of promotion. And that's where the 
that's where the Chicago Book Fair comes in mm -hmm. because it changes the promotion game and that's where things get financial and that's where things really happen and so that's why it's important for you to come in and bring in your product. Sure, you know, usually the promoting that we do is promoting to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. You're promoting to people because you think what you want their money Oh, my, our people got money. We just spend it mm -hmm. in some places that we shouldn't spend it. But we have money. But now if you just talk to me, say something about me, like talk about our own experience, we can find just as much affluence, comfort, exposure, expansion, if we do things for ourselves. Usually we've done things to get the approval of others, but those days are gone. We're going into 2020 and beyond. Wake up, everybody. Exactly. Get the smelling salts out and let's <laughs> do right. do things for ourselves. So that's the difference. Yeah, I was really uh, disappointed to find out, like you said, some of the statistics that I found about uh, is that, you know, we were the, actually the audience of love and romance books. 95% mm. of the people who buy wow. love and romance books are African American women. Amazing. And so I'd like to know, actually I was disappointed because we write about 1% of those books. Mm. So that's where writing groups come in like mine and that's where book fairs, uh, uh, book fairs come in because we need to be writing our own romance stories. We and do. There are tons of them. Rochelle oh, okay. Allers. There are, there are tons of black romance writers. We got to find them and that's what the book fair is for, to expose them and get us out there supporting our own work. Absolutely, and so that's why mm -hmm. I'm glad that you brought yourself from the East Coast to Chicago, mm. and uh, yeah. you brought your book fair with you. That's right, it was in my spirit, because I didn't know I was gonna do it, but when God told me to do it, I got up and did it. You got so up and did, did it, yeah. okay. So, uh, Ashada. Go Asada. ahead, baby, Ashada, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I wanna thank you for coming out, and so we're gonna sure. take a, another break. Thank you. Exactly.